Okay. Good morning and welcome everyone to the course BC214 on developing the human spirit. Uh, we've been learning about the spirit man and how to develop or we're going to get into learning about the faculties and functions of the human spirit and how to develop those uh, as we journey along. Let's uh, pray together and we'll get started. Could somebody pray with us? And then we will start, please. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for this time. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us this morning. Help us to understand uh, the deep things of your spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, your word says your Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of the Father to us, Lord God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would open our eyes of understanding and we would be able to uh, understand your things and spirit well, Lord God. Um, help all of us to uh, stay focused and to apply this in our practical lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Again, welcome, everyone, to our class on developing the human spirit. Last week, we were talking about the interactions of the human spirit with the spiritual realm. And uh, we were just talking about how the um, our human spirit can connect and experience spiritual things. So we, in the in, in the previous weeks, we spoke about the fact that uh, God works, in, in the case of the believer, he works in and through our born-again human spirit. So that's the place. God is spirit. So the place of primary contact with us is in our spirit. And so God gives us revelation. He light, enlightens us. He speaks to us in our spirit. We saw different things the Holy, you know, the Holy Spirit does. He bears witness with our spirit. He gives revelation to our spirit. The fruit of the spirit is born in our spirit. God works through our spirits, our human spirit. We looked a little bit at a discussion we had here on, uh, uh, you know, did God, re did God really harden Pharaoh's heart or was it something he did himself? And so we, you know, we put the, you know, the way we explained it is that Pharaoh was responsible for the condition of his own heart, but it was God who let him go that way. You know, he made the choice. Okay, God let him go that way. And so when the scripture attributes about God doing it, it really is God letting Pharaoh go in the direction he chose to go uh, and so on. Then we started talking about spiritual experiences. So what I, what I want to do in this section is just to awaken us to the fact that our spirit can experience things in the spiritual realm. So our spirit uh, can, it's like our, we are living in two worlds. Just as, as, think about our life in the natural world, right? In the natural world, we can feel things. You know, there's a cold wind blowing, oh, you can feel it. Um, the sun is too hot, you feel it. Uh, it's like things in the natural world. Right? Because we are in this physical body, we're able to see all of these things. But very interestingly, while we are in this physical body and we can engage with the natural realm, our spirit gives us the ability to engage or interact with the spiritual realm. You know? So there are things in the spirit that we can also experience. And we also understand that God, who is spirit, he also manifests himself in the natural realm. You know, So that's what we kind of looked at last week when in God's interaction with Moses. Uh, while Moses was engaging with God, God, who is spirit, was manifesting himself in the natural world through various ways, in, especially in the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud. It doesn't mean the fire was God or the cloud was God. It was God using those natural things to make his presence visible. So when they saw the cloud, they recognized that's God's presence. You know, it doesn't mean the cloud is God, but that's the presence of God expressed in our world. 
Similarly, when they saw the fire, they recognized okay, that was, you know, God coming there. And so we, have, we can see many examples of uh, the interaction that God had with people. And I'm just pointing to a few, not this, you know, the Bible is full of it when you go from Genesis to Revelation. For example, in Isaiah chapter 6, uh, we read about Isaiah having a vision of God. You know, so he's here in the natural world. He's in a physical body, but he is able to see. God is enabling him to see into the unseen, the spiritual world, and he is seeing all the way into the throne room. You know, now it would not be possible with an, our natural eyes. So obviously, it is not his physical eyes that is seeing this, but in the eyes of the spirit, God has so opened him his eyes, giving him vision. That he's able to see, you know, in heaven, see into heaven, see the throne room, see the glory of God, and see the 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 the, the, the angelic beings, the cherubims worshiping, and seeing uh, the robe of God, you know, just filling the temple, right? So what's happening? The eyes of his spirit have been opened. There is no distance. There's no in our physical eyes. There is a limit of how far we can see. But in our spiritual eyes, that, that, that limitation is long, no longer there. The spirit is seeing into the spirit world. And he is actually seeing into the throne room. God is letting him see it. God is giving him a vision. Uh, similarly, Ezekiel is having spiritual experiences. Uh, and and he, he had numerous experiences. I just mentioned a few. Uh, Ezekiel 3, uh, he's having a vision where God is telling him to eat a scroll. And he eats the scroll, and uh, it's like honey. Um, so this is not a physical eating. He's not physically eating, chewing on a scroll. But it's like spiritual eating. It's like his spirit is receiving the scroll, and, uh, and, 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 and it's, 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 it's engaging with it. And then it's basically the prophecies that God wants to wanted him to prophesy so he's having a spiritual experience and 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 uh, you know and and that is leading him uh, to then release the word of the Lord uh, several examples that Ezekiel had I've mentioned a few Ezekiel chapter 3 he's hearing a great thunderous voice so that means in the spirit we can hear the voice of God uh, he is he's feeling he's feeling certain things bitterness, uh, he's, he's agitated about something, the heat of my spirit. So that means he's, he's feeling something in his spirit because God's hand is upon him. You know, So our spirit can hear in the spirit. Our spirit can feel things in the spirit. Right? So he's feeling bitterness. He's feeling heat, meaning, you know, and I understand these are old English words, but then there's something that is stirring him, moving him in the spirit. In Ezekiel 8, he's got a different experience. He's feeling, he's feeling that somebody is lifting him up by his hair. As though somebody, you know, is pulling his hair and lifting him up. Obviously, this is not in the natural, but this is his feeling. He's feeling in the spirit that being lifted up and the spirit lifted me up between heaven and earth. So he's feeling like, oh, I'm being transported. And then in visions, he is coming to Jerusalem. He's, he's actually going to another city. That means God is letting him see all the way into Jerusalem, all the way into, you know, the, the inner court, and see what, seeing what is happening there in the temple. Right? So what are we what are we saying? There are so many different kinds of experiences our spirit can have. Our spirit can hear the thunderous voice. Our spirit can feel. Our spirit can feel as it's being lifted up. Our spirit can actually see way into, you know, another place. Like he's seeing way into Jerusalem, right? Now, Ezekiel 11, once he, he feels the spirit lifted me up and brought me. You know, so that means he's feeling like, oh, I'm going there. I'm going into another place, into Jerusalem. And seeing what's happening, he's seeing these men there. He's seeing these people do certain things there. Uh, similarly, 
once again in Ezekiel 43, he's having another experience where the Holy Spirit is bringing him into the inner court and he's seeing the glory of God fill the temple. Okay, so I'm just putting this out there for us to see that our spirit can interact in the spiritual realm. We can have these kinds of experiences where God can let us see into heaven. Uh, God can let us see even into this, what's happening into this world in other places. God can help us hear the voice, thunderous voice of God. God can help us feel in our spirit, you know, certain feelings, certain sensations. So these all are things that can happen to our spirit, right? And so we must be uh, awakened to these things or be open now to these things. Uh, just pointing us to some other uh, um, examples in Scripture. Daniel, you know, when he had these visions and dreams, he was grieved in his spirit, and uh, he, in his spirit was troubled because of, uh, his, at that point, his inability to understand the visions and dreams that God had given him. So the soul and the body uh, was affected uh, by the spiritual reality, you know, of what was happening. So sorry, I didn't finish the sentence here. By spiritual reality. So in, in Daniel 10, an angel came and touched Daniel. Daniel felt so weak. The angel came and touched Daniel and Daniel he strengthened. And then Daniel was able to stand up on his feet. He felt strengthened. So the spiritual is touching the physical. You know, the angel is touching him and giving him strength, physical strength. So that also can happen. Other examples, Paul. Paul the Apostle, he was caught up into the third heavens. You know, he, his spirit was taken there, and he heard things uh, that were, you know, he said, I, I can't even express it. John the Beloved, the whole book of Revelation, John is caught up into the into the heaven, and in heaven, he's shown all these, you know, he's seeing these visions of things that are yet to come, you know. And so uh, John John gets gets all this revelation. He hears and he sees things while in the in the spirit he is actually in heaven. Right? So that's again a different kind of experience. So these are all good experiences that we see that we as believers can have and we must therefore be open to. I'm not saying we are running after these things or we are, you know, we're always asking God to give us these experiences. I'm just saying that these are things we must be open to. Our human spirit can interact with God who is spirit. On the other side, we, we must also mention uh, in passing that uh, demonic powers can affect the human spirit, right? Uh, that means uh, we're not talking about ourselves. But we're talking about other people who are not born again. Uh, they can be influenced. Their human spirit can be influenced by demonic powers. So demonic powers can influence them. They can possess them, empower them, give them special powers, give them special abilities. And that's how we know that you know some people can uh, tell fortune. They can uh, they can you know even uh, tell you about the past. And say this this has happened in your life well how do they know it because some evil spirit is revealing that to them you know so we are aware of it uh, and we shouldn't be surprised so the end point i mean the main point is this as human beings and we are especially telling about us as born again people as believers we can connect to the spiritual and the natural world so our physical body is connecting to the natural world our spirit can experience things in the spiritual realm Right? And so we want to be open to these things. Now, we are going to extend this a little further as we get into the next lesson, where uh, we want to understand the faculties of the human spirit, and then we want to understand the functions of the human spirit. Right? So first, we're going to talk about the faculties. Faculties means this is what um, the human spirit uh, is uh, able to do. And when we talk about the functions, this is what the human spirit actually does for us. Right? Uh, these are the uh, functions, how it operates inside us. Now, the faculties means these are uh, capabilities of the human spirit. Now, 
uh, uh, this is something we repeat in, uh, you know, when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the prophetic. So you may see some of these things repeated in other courses as well. But uh, it, it's good to repeat it and also to uh, you know, look at it from different angles. Uh, what we must understand is that our human spirit, the heart or the spirit, has at least five spirit senses. Right? So when God is telling his people, he says, you know, I've given you a heart to perceive, eyes to see, ears to hear. So he's talking about the heart. He says, no, okay, God has given you a heart. Uh, yet he's saying, you know, your heart is not able to see. Your ears are not able to hear. So, so technically, this is what God would have wished that would have happened for this people, but the people were so blinded and so stubborn it didn't happen to them. But we are looking at it from a positive side. It means God originally had given them a heart so that they could perceive, they could see, they could hear. But unfortunately, because of their stubbornness, even though God was doing such amazing things, these people, His people, Israel were unable to see, unable to hear. Okay, so we're not looking at, we're not pointing fault with them, but we're just saying, look, this is what God intended for them. Or in another place in Isaiah 6, again, he says, you know, the heart of these people is dull. The ears are heavy. The eyes cannot see. Right? So he's talking about the heart. The heart has faculties. The ears of the heart, the eyes of the heart. In that case, again, they were not able to hear or they were not able to see. Okay, so that it's it's uh, it's the condition of the heart that prevented them from hearing and seeing at that time in this particular case. But the point I want to get across to us is that the heart or the spirit has these abilities it has the ability to hear just like the natural we are able to hear it has the ability to see just like in the natural we have the ability to see right so we can draw a parallel between our spirit the faculties of our spirit and the faculties of the body the body has these five faculties you can feel see hear taste and smell that information goes into the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, where we reason, we analyze, and then we decide on what action to take. So also, our spirit, our human spirit, has at least five faculties. That means your spirit has eyes, it can see. Your spirit has ears, it can hear. Your spirit can feel. Your human spirit can also taste and smell in the spirit. Right? Uh, we saw an example where, you know, when Ezekiel ate the scroll, he it was taste. He tasted like honey. John ate the scroll. It tasted like honey initially. Uh, you can smell in the spirit. Uh, there is the uh, we are the aroma of Christ. Uh, there is the our prayers rise up like incense. So obviously there is some good smell in the spirit. Right? So in the spirit, we can feel, see, hear, taste, and smell. These are the faculties. Of the spirit and the Holy Spirit interacts with us through these faculties right? he bears witness he communicates through these faculties so just as in the natural uh, when we are talking to people we use hand movements we use actions we use pictures uh, we use sound all kinds of things to communicate in the natural so also in the spiritual the Holy Spirit will use pictures, he will use feelings, he will use sound, or he will use words uh, to communicate to us in the spirit. Right? So we need to recognize this, that your spirit or our human spirit has these faculties. And we can show them from scripture. Right? So there are five parallel faculties. And our goal is to learn how to exercise or use these faculties, how to develop each of these five faculties.
Okay. Let me pause at this moment to see if there are any questions here. Are, are, are you all with me so far? Yeah, everyone's with me. Any questions? Okay. So what we have said is very simple. Our human spirit has at least five faculties, like the physical body. It's a parallel. Right? So just as we train our physical you know, faculties to see and recognize things, we must train our spirit faculties. Right? So example, in the natural, you know, uh, when you look at a little baby, when they're teaching the child, you know, they show a picture of a tree, say tree, dog, cat. So the child is being trained to recognize, oh, that is a dog, that is a cat. And the child has the faculty to see. So the child is seeing, it sees a dog or sees a cat or sees a tree or an apple or an orange. It sees it, but initially it may not recognize it unless, you know, until parents are teaching, okay, hey, that's a dog, that's a cat. So then the child begins to recognize, or oh, dog, cat. So it's going through a learning process. Now think about that in the spiritual. We said that God communicates to us in the spirit. So God is communicating to us in the spirit, but we initially, initially, we may not recognize what is God saying. I can feel God's presence. I can feel like He's saying something, but I'm not able to. I'm not yet. I'm not yet trained to recognize what is God telling me. Right? What does this presence mean? Or oh, feeling His presence, or or sometimes, you know, there may be a picture coming. God is showing us something, and we may not even recognize it. Or even if we recognize it, uh, we may not be able to know, you know, we're not able to understand how to interpret it. What is God saying? What does that picture mean? Or uh, sometimes we overlook words God is speaking to us in the spirit. You know, the message is actually coming to us. It comes to us, and we think, like, ha, huh, maybe I just remembered something, or maybe. It's not really God. Maybe it's just my imagination. And we actually ignore it, you know, because our spirit has not been trained to see, to hear, to feel. Right? And a big problem for us is we have not been able to discern spirit and soul. So we think, oh, it's my soul at work. It's just my mind, my own imagination at work. But actually, it's God giving something in our spirit. He's saying, I want you to see this. I want you to hear this. And I want you to feel it. But we are not discerning between soul and spirit, spirit and soul. We have not understood the difference. And so we don't even pick it up. You know, we just leave it, we ignore it. And we are missing out on what the Holy Spirit is bearing witness or telling or communicating to of the spirit. So, just like in the natural, as the little child is actually trained to see, feel, you know, so the child example, again, I'm just giving this simple example to see that there's a paddle, right? So the child, child suppose there's a hot thing, you know, a hot dish kept on the table. The mother will say, don't touch it, it's hot. So by default, the child doesn't know oh, what's hot, what's cold. <laughs> but then what happens? Maybe he touches it first time. Oh, ouch, this is hot. OK, I understood. What is hot? You know, what I must not touch. So the, the, the sense of feeling is being trained. This is hot. This is cold. I must recognize this is you know, the feeling. You know? so, Similarly, in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is giving us a feeling. We saw Ezekiel, he said, 
I felt heat. I felt bitterness in my spirit. I felt like being lifted up. You know, so all those feelings he experienced in his spirit. So we experience things in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is communicating, telling us something. But we may not pick it up in the beginning. We don't understand. Okay, this is the Spirit of God giving me this feeling. He's telling me something, what I should do, what I should not do. He's correcting me. What you know, and we may not pick it up. But as we are trained, as we learn, okay, this is from the Holy Spirit. This is my own soul, my own feeling. Okay, I leave this feeling aside. And I will pick the sun from the spirit. Then we are able to discern, able to understand, and we are able to, you know, interact meaningfully with the Holy Spirit ministering or speaking to us in the spirit, in our own spirit. Okay, so that should be our objective to develop our spirit, develop our spirit to develop the faculties. Each faculty, seeing, hearing feeling and there's more and more you know uh, that we develop our faculties and so for example even revelation comes to us through our spirit faculties okay? so when you're reading the bible example when you're reading the bible Of course, you're doing your natural study, meaning you're reading the scripture. You might be looking up the Hebrew, the Greek. You might be looking up the meaning. You might be doing your, you know, whatever you, you do in the, in the natural with your mind. But while you're reading the scripture, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in the spirit. Through the faculty, maybe, uh, or what you hear, through your faculty of feeling, some, sometimes through your faculty of seeing. Okay? So as we are reading the scriptures, we are using our physical eyes, we are using our natural mind to you know, understand what we are reading. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit is ministering to us in our spirit. Right? In your spirit. Through the faculties of your spirit, the Holy Spirit is communicating. He's giving you revelation. He's giving you illumination. So, you must learn to listen to that. Pick it up. And then, we will understand the scriptures better. We will like, okay, this is what God is saying. Sometimes it will be very personal. It is God speaking something to you personally in your life situation, giving you some guidance, giving you some instruction. Uh, but you're putting that two together. That means you're putting the natural, what you're reading, with what is coming through the faculties of your spirit. So that is where the Holy Spirit is going to give you revelation. Right? If those faculties in our spirit are not awake, then what's happening? Very sad. We're only limited to our natural mind in the reading of God's word. So that's very limited. Right? Because you're processing everything only with the natural mind, and we are missing out on the inspiration, revelation, and teaching of the Holy Spirit coming to us through our spirit. Okay, so that's one reason why we have to train our spirit, train our spirit. Another reason why we have to train the faculties of our spirit is when we are ministering to other people. Right? So when you're ministering to other people. The Holy Spirit is going to use the faculties of your spirit to talk to you and communicate to you. What should you tell that person? You know, what word must you give? What encouragement must you bring? What encouragement must you bring? How must you minister? Right? So that's coming from the Holy Spirit through our spirit. So our, the faculties of our human spirit must be alert, must be sharpened, must be awake. So we can hear from the Spirit of God and then minister to people uh, as we are serving others. So the, what I'm saying is both for our own personal edification and growth as we study the scriptures, as well as you know, as we are ministering to other people, it's so important for us to have the faculties of our spirit awake, you know, what we see, 
hear, feel, touch, and taste. Um, uh, that should be, a, uh, sorry, taste and smell. That sh the faculties of our spirit should be sharp, should be awake, so we can hear and receive from the Holy Spirit. Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Online, anyone, uh, any questions? Okay. So let's move to the next lesson. Uh, in this lesson, we just mentioned you know, that there are these faculties, and the, our goal is to develop each of these faculties, right? So we're going to start number seven, and I'll just move through each of these five faculties quickly. So seeing the faculty or the ability of our spirit to see. Right? So we know, we already looked at some scripture where Jesus talked about, uh, uh, the Old Testament speaks about it, and Jesus repeated it. He's talking about the hearts of the people, right? and he's talking about their ears. Sorry, the ears cannot hear, the eyes cannot see. Now he's talking about the heart, he's not talking about the natural. Right? So it's so important for our ears to be able to hear, our eyes to be able to see. Now, the eyes of the heart we're talking about, obviously. Right? So the eyes of our spirit must be able to see. The ears of our spirit must be able to hear. And then what would happen is, when, when that happens, then the heart can turn. So that's how the heart turns. The heart will draw closer to God. They're going to experience the working of God. So really, our ability to see, our ability to hear, is going to draw hearts to encounter God and experience what He wants for us. So we're going to talk about eyes or seeing. So what do we see? See, we see pictures and images, right? So in the physical, you're seeing, you're seeing pictures, images. It's, it's like a lot of information is coming in. Right? So even in the na in the spiritual, God helps us see. The eyes of our spirit see. Right? So we saw uh, we saw example. Isaiah saw he saw all the way into heaven. Yeah? That means a vision. His spiritual eyes could see all the way to heaven. Uh, Ezekiel, the Holy Spirit helped him see, but now he's seeing into something else. He's seeing into Jerusalem. He's seeing how the people are practicing idolatry. He's seeing into the temple. So God is enabling him to see. Now, how is that happening? It's like as the God is I'm, I'm just using this as an illustration. I'm not saying God is actually doing it. It's as though God is playing out a video movie, video for him, right? Uh, it's as though he's watching, as though it's uh, just an example. It's as though he's watching a video. This is what is happening. So that means he's seeing these things happening. The spirit is able to see. Okay. And uh, through these pictures, or through you know what we are saying, like a like a vision or a video, some of what God is enabling him to see these things, seeing these pictures and uh, uh, the visuals that God is giving to him, and through these visuals, God is communicating information to him. Right? Whether it's about God, or oh, this is how heaven is, and this is the Lord, and these are the angels around him, and this is what they are crying out, saying, "Holy, holy, holy!" And this is how the throne room is, with the robe of his, of his, of, with his robe covering the temple. So God is communicating something to Isaiah through what he sees. Okay. So the most common experience for us is that we see pictures. And images that God gives to us in the spirit. There are things that are coming up in the spirit, and we are able to see these pictures. 
okay? Um, uh, we could have these in dreams, so that's while you're while we are asleep, we're able to see these things, or through visions, that means while you're awake. So what you see when you're awake, we call it visions. What you see when you're asleep, we call it dreams. Uh, God can give pictures. Uh, we can see even events and things happening. Uh, sometimes uh, we, we have a trance. That means the natural faculties are suspended, and then you see. Now, uh, usually, when you're seeing a vision, or you're seeing pictures, you're seeing events happening, you're also conscious about the physical around you. So your spirit is seeing, your natural body is very much aware of all things around you. So in a trance, God suspends that. So in a trance, what happens? Your spirit is seeing things, but and at, at that moment when God is showing you these things, He suspends your awareness of the physical. So that's the difference between a trance and what God shows us in a vision picture or in uh, the, the other ex uh, communication here. Okay, and then we can see into the spirit realm. That means what is going on in the spirit realm. So that's another way of seeing. Here, God is showing you pictures. He is showing, he's showing you events and things happening. But here, your spirit is seeing into the spirit realm. You're seeing what's going on. You're seeing the current activity in the spirit realm. Example is uh, um, Elisha and his servant in Second Kings six. You know, they saw the um, heavenly armies and chariots all around them so that's they're, they're seeing what is happening in the spirit realm okay uh and lastly is what like we saw in ezekiel he is actually going in the spiritual realm through what he's seeing he's actually seeing something happening in another place right he's seeing something happening in jerusalem now that can either God shows that to him in a vision or his spirit is actually traveling into Jerusalem. Either way, it can happen, right? Um, that uh, he can see what's in Jerusalem while he is away or his spirit is actually traveling into that place and he is seeing. So what are we learning now? We are learning that it is possible for our spirit to see and there are different kinds of seeing what our spirit can see different kinds one we are saying there are dreams what we call as dreams or the bible calls as dreams which is when we are physically asleep so physically we are sleeping but our spirit is getting information through pictures so we call that a dream and it comes into our conscious mind. You wake up and you say, oh, I've had a dream. Okay. What has happened? God has given something, some information through pictures that you can recall in the morning. You wake up, when you're conscious, it's in your mind. You're able to recall it. And in the mind, you're saying, I saw this, this, this. I saw this thing happen. I saw that thing happen. It's all in pictures. Very rarely it'll be only a sentence, a word. It's all in pictures. So we call that a dream. What has happened? While your body was sleeping, basically your body was asleep, God was communicating to your spirit. He put some pictures. He put some uh, a sequence of pictures into your spirit, and then it's come into your mind. So when you wake up, oh, God has spoken. But he's spoken through pictures. And he spoke to you when you were asleep. So that's, that's called a dream. And God has communicated through visual, through visuals, what the eyes of your spirit see. Now, the same thing can happen when you're awake. And so that's called visions. That means you're awake, your body's very aware of what's happening around you. You know, you're, you're very conscious of it. 
but in your spirit you're seeing something God is showing you it could be a still picture or it could be a sequence of events things happening that's a vision right so it could be a picture it could be a sequence of events now I'm just repeating what we did, we covered trance means it's very similar to a vision the only difference is in trance your awareness of what's around you, your surroundings is suspended at that moment temporarily God suspends it so that's a trance you can also see into the spiritual realm that means your spiritual eyes are open to see actual happenings in the spiritual realm but their angels their interactions and so on and you can also go across distance while you're seeing now that can happen in two ways it can happen either you're seeing a vision of something happening somewhere in another city or it can happen through transportation that means you're actually being translated and transported your body may be in one place but your spirit is actually going and seeing something elsewhere so they call it transportation or by location right so uh, these are certain experiences that we can have uh, is everybody with me so far um, any questions uh, on this so far are you understanding oh. this also I have a small doubt please go ahead uh, so the I think the last one which we mentioned um, one of the examples Philip in uh, Samaria uh, is he transported uh, to a different place or um, people in both locations can see him at the same time or is it different only one place people would see ah so in um, Acts 8 uh, Philip's example he was physically transported uh, from one location from from Samaria I think into Caesarea so that was God the Holy Spirit physically transporting from point A to point B so we would call that as transportation and he was in one place at one time but the transportation took place by the Holy Spirit so that's in in, in that particular instance right he was physically taken from uh, Samaria into Caesarea he's transported now that was physical transportation okay it's like us taking a flight and going from <laughs> Bangalore to Mangalore but that is a natural thing but now though imagine instead of the flight the Holy Spirit moves you know moves you from point A to point B that's what happened to Philip he was supernaturally transported what we're talking about is if my body was left in one city but in the spirit my spirit was taken by the Holy Spirit to another city so that example was in Ezekiel Ezekiel says I felt the Holy Spirit lift my spirit and in the spirit he took me to the temple in Jerusalem so his body was there uh, in uh, by the river Chebar wherever he was there in, in Babylon in the spirit the spirit is traveling so body there spirit is traveling to Jerusalem so that's translocation is physically in one place spirit is traveling to another place uh, he is in a spirit visiting now there are cases where people see the same person in two locations example and again we can't we, we don't have a chapter and verse for this clearly so uh, we just have to keep this in mind I'm not saying you know preach it and make a doctrine out of it but example Ezekiel was in you know in captivity so people see his body he's physically there hey, where is he yeah he's there he's sitting in his room uh, there 
but the spirit has been taken to Jerusalem. Suppose, I'm just saying suppose, it's not recorded for us, but suppose God enabled people in Jerusalem to see a visible expression of his spirit. I'm only saying suppose because it's not actually recorded. Then at that time, people would say, hey, Ezekiel is here in uh, Jerusalem. But the same moment, people are saying, Ezekiel is there in Babylon. So that means by location, they're seeing him in two places at the same time. Right? Now, some stories, meaning stories, meaning there's not biblical accounts, but this is like, you know, testimonies people will tell. Hey, this happened uh, by location. I was body was seen here, but people in another city saw me. Uh, then you would say, yeah, uh, okay, uh, that's by location. Is how is it possible? Like we said, we explained it, but we can't really, you know, like always prove it uh, from chapter and verse uh, that it was always. Uh, it's exactly the way I described it. It's hard to prove it, so uh, I don't want to preach it like a doctrine or anything. I'm just saying, like, we can imagine that this is how it would have happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 30, um, after the uh, preaching in the synagogue, and when people tried to stop Jesus, mm. and uh, they we see one verse 29 and 30 and rose up and thrust him out of the city and they led him to the brow of the hill on which the city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff then passing through the midst of them he went his way would it be a supernatural phenomenon because the entire intention of the people was to pull jesus off from the cliff and uh, he we read that then passing through the midst of them uh, uh, would it be something related to this? Yeah. Uh, so this, I mean, look for, look for 28 to 30 is a supernatural happening where none of the people, so you can imagine a big crowd of people and one man, right? One person, Jesus, a big crowd. So even if there were 10 people, but definitely there must have been more than 10 people, maybe 100 people or something like that. So many people trying to push one man off the cliff. And they couldn't. And it says, he turned around, and he just walked through them, and nobody touched him. Right? So imagine, I'm just saying, for numbers sake, there are 100 people. They were not able to touch him. So that is definitely a supernatural thing. And that is the working of God's power at that moment, where, you know, if you want to imagine, these 100 people became powerless. They may have wanted to lift their hands. Nobody could move their hands. They may have wanted to open their mouth and shout. Maybe they can't even speak. You know, so that moment, the power of God, you know, just froze all of these people. And then Jesus just walked through. It's a supernatural event. But it is different from, uh, uh, you know, like what we're talking about, the translocation or the moving in the spirit. It's slightly different. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what we've introduced today is our human spirit has five faculties. We need to develop these faculties. One of them is seeing, seeing in the spirit. And um, we need to develop this because uh, uh, we need to learn and train ourselves in the spirit. We will talk about more, more on this next week. To be able to see, because God gives us visions in the spirit. You know, he's not putting it in the front of our physical eyes. Our physical eyes are seeing this physical world. But the, in our, the eyes of our spirit, God is giving visions. So we need eyes that can see. The eyes of our heart. And so we need to pray. We need to train ourselves. We need to, by the word of God, of course, say, God, let the eyes of my spirit see more clearly. And then there are different ways in which God is going to help us see. Okay? So we'll pause here. Uh, we will continue this next week. 
um, talk about these five faculties and then we'll talk about the functions of the human spirit and how we can develop those areas okay uh, let's close in prayer and we, we will dismiss please somebody could lead us in prayer and close Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for the day. We thank you for the beautiful class that we had. God, I give all my classmates into your hands. God, we pray that our spiritual eyes will be open, Lord, to see the mysteries of the heaven, to see the mysteries of your kingdom, to see the amazing thing that you have got for us, Jesus. Help us to train ourselves. Uh, help us to spend more time in your presence, in your word, so that we can see the things that are beyond imagination. And we thank you for your love towards us, Jesus. We thank you that you want us to have such a deep relationship with you, that we can connect with you in our spirit. What an amazing God you are. Your love, your grace is so amazing, and we stand in awe of it right now, Lord. As we read our, as we read our Bible each and every day, uh, help us to see the things uh, through the spiritual eyes, Lord. Let our spiritual eyes be opened. Let our spiritual eyes see the things that you have got for us. We love you, we honor you, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you soon. God bless.